trying to hurry God, quit doing that. Because while you're waiting on the Lord, you might have bring the seagulls and run and not be able to walk in my name. And you need to do that so that when God does come show up, you'll be able to handle it. Can I have them sing? Sing it to the Lord, Chris.
first time I got to climb on board and we'll heat up the peak of the peak of whatever we are. <laughs> And uh, went over to uh, that street where the Holy Ghost was forced, uh, first poured out on, on the uh, day of Pentecost for America. And boy, y'all have just a high heritage in this place. Again, no wonder they call it Topeka. Amen. This is the first time I've been this far in Kansas, this this uh, side of the city over there that's next to Missouri. In Kansas City, uh, I think I was in Kansas City, Kansas. One time. But uh, that's really too close to Missouri, so that don't count. <laughs> well, I'm getting some points there, aren't I? <laughs> you, you may be seated. I, I am. I, well, I don't want to run out right now. Okay. <laughs> man that I am, there's a fight within me. <laughs> but uh, I, I, am, uh, I am really happy Amen. to be here. Right? You know, I, I feel just like the lightning bug that backed into the window fan. I'm just delighted to be here. I'm so glad to be a child of 
the King. I am so glad to be the wife of Jesus Christ. Now, you may not think I'm a pretty wife, and I don't think I make a pretty female. And I'm not even stuck in a crisis about that. <laughs> It is these adversities. 
Universities coupled with commitment that makes anniversaries not only possible, but sweeter as the days go by and the marriage stronger as the years go by. On December the 23rd, 1971, we were wed. I received that day a wedding gift that keeps on giving, and I wouldn't mind you giving my hand, my, uh, my wife a hand I want to be up front about that. Amen. Amen. And I just love her very much. Great fashion's wife. My son Dale and his wife Beverly and children were at my house about 11 months ago on a Saturday. Y'all remember what happened 11 months ago on a Saturday? I don't talk both speak at one time, okay? These folks, Philip and Kaylin, that was their wedding. It was a very special occasion. I told my daughter-in-law about how excited I was to participate in that wedding. She asked what I was going to do in the wedding. I told her I was to officiate in the foot washing segment of the ceremony. I will never forget her response. Her eyes looked as if they rolled in the back of her head and spun around in orbit. <laughs> then they crossed. I wonder why such contortion. So I said, what's so absurd about that? And she says, oh no, I need a pedicure. <laughs> then I explained, no, it wasn't going to be a foot washing service for everybody, but to show their Concern and love for each other, they were going to show their servitude through washing each other's oh, feet. Good. And that they did. Amen. And what a beautiful sight it was. So she sighed a great sigh of relief. <laughs> Speaking of weddings, I have some mighty strange ones that I have heard about. I've heard about some strange ones. I've seen some strange ones, and that was not strange. But I have seen some strange ones and heard about some that were even more bizarre. The Kimbers of Brussels, Belgium, were, lifting, were lifted on a platform by a crane up to 160 feet in the air for their wedding ceremony because they wanted a marriage in the sky. I just imagine the price of that wedding was sky high. A bride from China set a world's record. It was the longest bridal train that had ever been recorded. Her train was 219 yards long. It weighed 220 pounds. You talk about a train that fills the temple? Lisa and Drew Ellis were married at TJ Maxx. Because that was Lisa's happy place. Now that's finding a bride in a bargain. <laughs> Michelle Thomas married her fiance after he was brutally murdered in a gruesome attack by a gang. Even the power of death shall never stop us, she was determined. And she married him after he had been slain. A common wedding these days is just about as uncommon as the true love that was meant to hold the two together for the rest of their lives. But there is another very different and strange wedding I would like to tell you about. History, court, history records the event. It was the marriage of Captain and Dame Pugsley. It happened 323 years ago. It was the year of 1705. The bride was attired in a very, very old wedding dress. You might 
might say it was an heirloom. The bells of the church ring out to announce the wedding. The fiddler preceded the bride by the wedding march. Two brides made scattered flowers and herbs before, uh, before the pallbearers. Pallbearers? Preacher, did you say pallbearers? Yes. The bride adorned in her bridal gown did not walk in her wedding possession, uh, procession. She was carried. She was carried in a linen sheet. She was not carried to an altar. She was carried to a grave. And not just any grave. She was carried to the grave of Captain Pugsley. The captain was killed in action when Oliver Cornwell had invaded Bristol 60 years before. The story surrounding the event is rather bittersweet. The captain left for war in the year of 1645. Her, he and Dane barely had time to say their vows to each other, and then he was off to war. They promised a formal wedding ceremony when he would arrive back at a much later time after the war. Then, then he kissed her his goodbye, and out he was gone, and truly, I mean gone. The captain was, the captain died in battle. And for the next 60 years, Dane lived in perpetual mourning. She clung to her wedding dress, awaiting the day she would join the side of her husband, her captain of captains. In her last will and testament, she, deter she, she detailed instructions for her wedding. The ceremony would take place after her death. The power, the very power of death, which separated them, would once again re remind or uh, reunite them in a grave. They would be then reunited in a grave after her death. It was the event of the season. It was the talk of the town. According to resources, 10,000 people from all over England Went to, uh, came to this wedding that was staged 60 years after the vow and after the vows were exchanged. This wedding took place between two deceased people. One was recently deceased and the other had passed six decades prior. On that day in 1705, Dane was reunited with her husband, her wedding dress became her burial shroud. Dane Pugsley was married and buried on the same day. You say bizarre. You say strange. You say eccentric. Well, maybe. Who had ever heard of such a thing? Hey, I have. All right. For Romans 6 and 2 says, How shall we that are dared to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his
in the four year waiting period is the making of the wedding dress. She would be married and buried in that wedding dress. Early morning, early Mormon women were also buried in their wedding dresses. To them it symbolized that marriage was not only terrestrial, it was also celestial. The marriage was not only good for time, but to them it was good for all eternity. Even today when a bride or a bride-to-be dies unexpectedly, it is not uncommon for them to be buried in their wedding dress. Yet there is not a more beautiful and symbolic picture of both marriage and burial as water baptism. The Apostle Paul in Romans 6 describes baptism as a, a funeral of hope, a blissful burial, an endearing internment, and death becomes a door. This grave becomes a bridal parlor where she prepares herself to be united with her groom that died 2,000 years ago. He died before us, but praise God because of baptism we have come after he has died and we join him in his grave by the power of Holy Ghost and by the power of baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. Jesus Christ was buried in the earth only to rise the third day triumphant over death, hell, and the grave. And I am buried with him in the waters of baptism to rise like he did. He did over death, over hell, and over the grave. I shall rise triumphant. Praise God. We are baptized into Jesus Christ with that same electrifying energy. When I am buried with him, I have the very same triumphant hope that he had when he was placed in the ground. Our baptism is in the likeness of the burial of Christ. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Jesus Christ himself referred to this earth-water relationship in Matthew 12 and 40. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. As Jonah was under water three days, Christ would be under the earth. Our immersion in water baptism identifies us with the burial of Jesus Christ. And as he was buried, so I am buried. Praise God. And as many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. I wear Jesus Christ as my wedding garment. by which I am a spouse. I'm more than just engaged. I am a spouse to the Lord and Savior. We shall, and I know this, I know I'm preaching to the choir, but the choir better be singing. And if you ain't singing, at least you can be humming. I believe in more baptism. Amen. I believe you've got to be baptized Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. for the remission of your sin. I believe that is your wedding garment. Amen. And if you don't have that, you are not going. Amen. Let me say this. You are not staying if you go. Amen. I got the Holy Ghost. It's good to have the Holy Ghost. Amen. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you can't go up. Right. If you don't have the name, you can't stay up. Right. I leave them in the book. The Holy Ghost lifts you up. The name keeps you up. 
you can't be a virgin just because you have never known a man. That may be man's qualification, but you got to be full of oil. Amen.
you need to be buried in the name of Jesus. That's exactly what I'm doing.
and he sent his servant to get money. But it couldn't be just any bride, because anything won't do Amen. to be the bride of this, of this great family. So the, the servant said, Lord, would you bid me good speed? And we're going to put it through the water test. All right. Let the bride that passes the water test be the one that is the bride for my son, or my servant's son. And no sooner had he got that prayer, he said, let the one that came come when I say, give me some water, that she will take the water and also fill my candles. Amen. Now, I don't know how many of y'all have ever filled up a candle. I don't even know how many of y'all ever smoked a candle. It's not very good at that. You better drop that and try a little holy smoke if you have it. Man. Throw down the, the back and pick up the Habakkuk. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, I gotta have a little fun here. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, she came and sure enough, he said, Would you give me something to drink? I like Jesus sitting on the well. Right. I, I need some to drink. And she said, well, well yeah, sure. And, and I will fill up your candles also. Yeah. Lady, do you know that's 10 candles with two humps? Do you know that's 20 humps? You've got you to be humping to do that. <laughs> I don't want to crack some of y'all's face, but y'all better not smile. <laughs> So here she is filling up these camels. The Greek, the, the Hebrew word for camel is the same as burden. It's burden. Here she was filling up what she thought was somebody else's burden. I don't know. Oh, help me, Jesus. I don't know who these camels belong to. But I won't fill them up. All right. I don't know where they're going from here, but they may need a little assistance to get home. All right. I don't know who's going to ride the backs of these camels. That's good. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. All this stuff in these camels and bags, all these whatever it is under there, it's all covered up. I don't know who they belong to. And I don't know who they're fixing to belong to. Right. Now we know. That's really some of us need to be a little more happy than we are right now. All right, all right. Good. When you fill up burdens, you fill up your ride home.
Praise God. Glory. Here you are extended an invitation. I'm begging you as one of his servants, if you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, I assure you by the mercies of God that you be baptized in the holy name of Jesus. It may present to you a burden in this life, but it will be your burden that is your right home.
And after she does that, she is ready to be a part of our family. Glory. We count her as no longer a part of her old family after that. She is totally and absolutely in our family. Now, I don't know why a lot of that stuff is destroyed by some of these people probably that don't believe baptism is essential. But that, that was not just a New Testament concept. Amen. Right. They asked John, are you the Messiah? No. Why are you baptizing? Why are you baptizing? We know when Messiah comes, he's going to baptize us out of the old into the new. Why are you? Because I have come to prepare his way. His way is baptism. That is his way. He shall also baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. But that does not eclipse his way. His way is baptism in water and baptism in spirit. Amen. That is Amen. the way of the Lord. And John could not baptize with the Holy Ghost. He just prepared the way. Praise God. I'm so glad I'm in the way. The bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land way. Thank God let's clap our hands to the Lord. God allowed 
allowed me to see the time he formed you. And he told me he was making the special lady that he had for me. And I would love her for the rest of my life. He made your face and oh, it was so beautiful. He made each one of your features and they were very exquisite and lovely. Then, oh, but then I became horrified. He gave to you a back that was severely twisted and knocked. And from you, I fell on my knees and pleaded with God. I said, oh, God, that would never do for my wife or my love. I prayed from that day, God, please give her my straight back. And I will most gladly bear her burden the rest of my life. She must never carry that sorrow. She cannot endure that shame. God looked at me that day as if something else was occupied his mind. Then God asked, really Moses, you mean you will carry that grief for her? Yes, God, most willingly I will bear her reproach in life. From you, he, he granted me my request. So you see, my lovely, my lovely wife, our marriage was made in heaven. History, history tells us that it was then that Fromji extended her hand to Moses for marriage and pledged him her life. She became his devoted life, his wife for the rest of her life. I know of another marriage that was made in heaven. For there was one who bore the shame of the one he loved. All right. Come on. Yes. Come on. Man. For there was one that carried the grief and the sorrow of the lady he loved. Man. For she was For she was twisted, where she was gnarled, where she was bent, where she was bowed beneath a broken, broken life. But he says, Oh no. That won't do for my wife. Right. I'll bear her sorrow. I'll carry her shame. I will be her deliverer. I will carry her burden to an old rugged cross on a hill far away. Somebody help me preach right now. I will wear her iniquity. I will wear her sorrow. I will be there for her. And it doesn't matter how grief born she is, how broken she is. I will carry her shame and I will bear her torment. That's the reason I gladly come and accept his garment. That's the reason I gladly come and cast my care upon him. That's the reason tonight, my friend, I have a marriage that was made in heaven. And consequently, I wear my wedding coat. Stand up, God, right now. Oh, hallelujah. 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 I'll carry your grief. I'll carry your sorrow. I'll carry your, your sickness. I'll take your twisted body. I'll have you bent back. I'll bear your shame. I'll bear your iniquity. I'll bear your loss to a cross. Come on, take my name. Take my name. There's a marriage that was made in heaven. Don't be cast out because you don't have the wedding party. Just a 
deep touch of the Holy Ghost that can sweep over our hearts in admiration for what He's done. Aren't you glad you wear His name? Amen. Aren't you glad He carried your love? Amen. I know this is not Sunday, but I'm still a wife of somebody that carried my love. Amen. I still have a marriage. Thank you, Lord. 